All right, well, today we are going to be fixing up my, unfortunately, very neglected property here. Now, hopefully by the end of this, we won't be able to say that anymore because this place will be back and better than ever, but we've got a lot of work ahead of us if we want to get it there. So basically, I let the property slip while I was so focused on building the shop. Then the irrigation system quit. I slacked on that, finally fixed it by having to basically dig up and replace everything throughout the yard. And then within two days, the well quit working. And then I slacked on fixing that, but we finally got it fixed with the new irrigation system and everything is working as it should. We even gave it a couple weeks to make sure that it was gonna continue working and we weren't gonna have another problem that was gonna derail the whole thing. But now that we have that fixed we need to put in the actual work the hard work to get it there so we spent a ton of time cleared out a metric ton of leaves that had piled up in different areas like by the well house and by the driveway here in between the house and the shop and specifically the backyard which was pretty much completely covered in leaves i then waited for a good weather window and spread a bunch of seed we got good rain for three or four days so hopefully it takes and we get some new grass in these areas but we're not done yet we still have really the hardest part to go the hardest areas to take care of and fix left and that's what we're going to be diving into first before we dive into some of the other upgrades but by the end of this it should look like a totally different place that's the goal at least so that being said before we get into the projects and the task at hand i want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor sunday so sunday is really Signing up for Sunday was the kick in the pants I needed to finally take the time to tackle these projects and bring this place back to something I can be proud of. It was kind of my the last excuse I had on the table uh, as far as something I really wanted to have figured out before we started down this path. So what is Sunday? Hold on, let me get a chair. So Sunday is a customized lawn plan that ships free directly to your door. It is about as easy and convenient as it gets. This was the final piece of the puzzle we really needed if we were gonna make this project work and make all this hard work we're putting in on the front side worthwhile in the end and be able to sustain it. But I thought prior to finding Sunday that the only option was to pay some company a ton of money to send some guy out once a month on their schedule whenever it's convenient for them to spray my yard real quick and leave. And I just, I couldn't justify it. I couldn't justify doing it, especially if it's something I can do myself. But the hard part with lawn care is there's so many different types of fertilizer, so many different types of lawn and soil types and sun versus no sun and grass types. There's so much to it. And that is why Sunday is so awesome. You go online, you put in your address, and it looks at all sorts of factors. It looks at your soil type, you know, your sun exposure, the climate, the common grass types, all of that stuff, and then formulates your custom lawn plan, and then it's shipped directly to your door. So all of the hard, hard work is done. All you've got to do is hook it up to a hose and spray it on your lawn, which is the easy part. But that being said, if you want to try it for yourself, head to GetSunday.com forward slash Ray, R-A-Y, and use code Ray30 for 30% off your first customized lawn plan. It's a great deal and a great way to just try it out firsthand and see how well it works for you. And then you can decide from there. So that being said, this is the easy part of what we've got to do. <laughs> but we got to get the hard work done first. So it's time to get into that. We got a lot of work to do if we want to get this place back in shape by the end of this. So thanks to Sunday for sponsoring today's video and giving us the tools we need to rebuild and maintain our lawn. And uh, yeah, let's get to it so we can get that done. So we're going to start in this back corner. This this corner has been haunting me for a while for a number of reasons and I am more than ready to get this area squared away because when it's nice, it's a, it's a nice spot. But at the moment, it's got several inches of these thick magnolia leaves. We've probably got an ecosystem going on <laughs> in the midst of these. And on top of that, we've got a bunch of junk piled up back here. And junk piled up outside is one of my biggest pet peeves. It is something I try with all my might to avoid because it irks me to my core. And here I am with junk piled up outside. Now granted, it's behind the shop. It's out of sight, out of mind, but it's, uh, it's already out of hand. So <laughs> we gotta move the junk anyway to get to the lawn itself and the vegetation. So we're gonna do that first because tonight is trash night and we can get this stuff out of our hair and it's gone and then we can make room for all the other stuff that we're gonna be picking up and straightening up and cleaning up throughout this process. So luckily now we got the trailer, we'll hook it up to the mower. It should make this job a little bit easier and uh, get this stuff towed to the curb. Kick it to the curb. 
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna quit Jibber Jabber and let's get to work. Yeah, well, let me let me get my close-up shot. <laughs> He's I'm famous. <laughs> Pieces of aluminum like this, but uh, it's got a nice big hinge on it. No, 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 no. Throw it away. Here's another thing I was saving, but I'm going to throw away. Because I'm being a responsible adult. This one's hard, because if I ever were to need another roof panel for this thing, I mean, I could just put it behind the container. I'm gonna save it. I, man, I'm gonna save it. Otherwise, I gotta cut it up, you know, and. Almost there, at least as far as the clean out is concerned. Where this thing starts. <laughs>
Whew. All right, well, we got all the trash thrown away, taken care of. They're not thrown away, but by the street. Hopefully they take it all. Uh, I feel like sometimes they won't take my steel stuff. But I, don't, I don't know. It's all there. Hopefully they take it. Uh, we've got all that long stuff <laughs> put back behind the container. Uh, that's stuff I just have to keep. That roof panel, didn't necessarily have to, but the roof panel, uh, the other stuff siding for the bus, which is, you know, it's like that'd be something that'd be pretty hard to find if I uh, needed it at some point. And then uh, the trim for the corner of the shop, uh, the shop corners. You know, if something gets mildly damaged on the shop from like a vehicle, it's probably what's going to get damaged. So definitely good to have some leftover you know, extras of that. So it's like it pains me to store that stuff because, you know, the shop siding had a worm colony growing in it because it's packed with dirt because it's been sitting there. But at the same time, like, if I need it, I'm going to be really glad I have it. So it's a fine line. It's a fine line. I don't know if you can tell just how thick this pile of leaves is, but it's thick, boy. Like I said, we got a whole ecosystem growing under these leaves at the moment, which is why we got to get this cleaned up. So uh, I did get us a tool to help make our leaf extraction easier, um, but I think for back here it's so concentrated that we might as well just use the rake. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's get to it. So I started working on raking all these leaves up and it is definitely way more enjoyable because it's way more satisfying when raking up these large magnolia leaves and these big piles because it's just so thick and you so quickly make a giant pile. I'm definitely one of those people where if I can see the transformation as I go, I'm into it. I'm loving doing it. But I struggle to do things like mow the grass when it's just barely tall enough to mow and you can hardly even tell what you've mowed over so this is uh you know this this part i find enjoyable i can't uh i can't pretend that i don't enjoy this and especially trying to suck these things up with the old mow raider it does a pretty good job of picking them up and you know these piles being so central and so big and so concentrated we could have just raked them into bags but the nice thing about doing it this way is it kind of shreds them up and compacts them anyway which is helpful because you never realize how much room leaves take up in a bag until you start bagging up some leaves and you'll see what seems to be a small amount of leaves and it'll be several several bags and we already have a ton of bags so we're trying to minimize the amount of baggage <laughs> that we have to deal with during this project so that and uh i mean hey this is a little more enjoyable to do it this way and breaks up the uh, manual labor aspect of it the only thing i'm unsure on is if we can do the giant super tall pile all right i don't know how well this is gonna work but it might not be as efficient but it'll be more enjoyable and raking these things up by hand all the bugs crawling out of this because these leaves are wet on the bottom layer and it is like a whole ecosystem is coming out It becomes a bit of a fine line when doing this because where all the leaves were, all the grass is pretty much gone, which is why we have to get the leaves up because they just suffocate the grass from sunlight and water. But also as we get down to the last few leaves, the stragglers, you start scooping up more dirt than you do leaves. So it's kind of tough to find that point of when is enough enough? When do I stop? All right, well, that actually took Less bags than I expected. It's only five bags. I mean, they're pretty packed, but not bad. Less than I thought. Let's see if this thing starts. I need to run some errands and go get a fresh battery for this thing. Of course not. I just remember getting this battery out. It sucks. 
All right, well, I'm kind of tired of this battery this battery thing where I gotta keep jumping it with my jump pack. So it'd be nice to be able to just turn it on and off. So I'm gonna pull this battery out, see if it's still under warranty. It, no, definitely not, 2021. Um, but I'm gonna at least go get another battery. This is annoying, <laughs> so let's fix it. And then we can get back to our uh, duties. We're gonna need this thing for this next part a lot. So I wanna fix this. If I remember correctly though, battery is kind of annoying to get out. It's definitely not a 10. I feel like it's an 11 or something That's weird. Yep, 11. Gotta put a kill switch on my lawnmower. Now that it's summer, if it's getting used every couple of weeks, it's fine. It's just in the winter when it sits for like a couple months. Battery gets drained and then they don't ever come back. Should put an excess power battery in this thing. Oh yeah, that made it way easier. I'm not trying to go down the rabbit hole, but real quick, real quick. have an unreasonably hard time using my actual truck to do truck things. Oh, I forgot this is still in there. Actual truck. Nah. All right, fresh battery. Uh, I just gotta remember how I got it out. Ow. Oh, that was angry. So this battery is normally a huge struggle to take in and out and uh there's a little bracket there that i'm always too lazy to take off because oh why take more time i'll take less time but taking it off this time was the move shouldn't need this anymore also went ahead and picked us up a bow rake i have a big like, oh. I have a big landscaping rake, but uh, I need a rake like this. That one's just, it's a little too big to get in some places when you're trying to move soil around. Anyway, I'm jibber jabbering. So let's get back to it. We got a little more to do in that area, and then we can move on to really the biggest part of this project. It's gonna be rough, but it's gonna be worth it, I promise. This is me telling myself that. But for you too, for you too, I think it'll be worth it. All right, we do have one more project back here too after this. Just thought about. So some time ago, I added an outlet and lights in here. And we put the lights up with some double-sided tape originally, and then they did not hold up well. So I got some more double-sided tape, taped the whole things, and uh, same thing. They pretty much all fell down with the exception of this one. So now I'm back to having no lights in here, which is really challenging because even in the daytime, it's dark in here. So, Josue got me these a while ago. They're little magnets that you can zip tie to. So these are perfect for the roof. So we're gonna put these up, zip tie our lights up, and then we're gonna have lights in the container again for when we need to come in here. Man, it is blazing in here. It is a sauna. Just that saying something because it's definitely a sauna outside. <laughs> Uh, so let's get this done. Let's get it done quick. This door open. Open. It's nice. The other one. Oh my 
gosh, it is literally 4,000 degrees up there. Whew. No, it's hot when outside feels nice. This is definitely one of those out of sight, out of mind projects where you never think about these until you need them. So I come in the container day or night, but especially at night, can't see anything. I'm trying to find some part. I of course don't know exactly where it is usually and you got no light. And I think, oh man, I really need to remember to put those lights up with those magnets Josue got me. And then time goes on and then you forget and then you need them again and they're not there. So I'm glad we're finally tackling this. All right, brutal. Well, I'm gonna go hook up the power to these and we'll see if they work. I am curious how hot that roof is though because I might touch my scalp on it and burn. I'll be back. All right, let's try this out. Ah, yeah, that's way better. Normally I gotta bring a flashlight of some sort. All right, let's see what the uh, temp of the roof is here. Any guesses? I, I can't. I can't guess, I don't know. It's gotta be 150 to 160. 154, that is wild. That's a cool spot. Oh, it's probably where it's shaded by the tree. 157, what's the wall comparatively? 110 versus basically 160. Yeah, hot, very hot. All right, uh, other project we gotta do back here. Let me close this up. the enabler where I really like my trees so I don't want to trim them but not trimming them is bad for them. Also the branches are always way bigger on the ground than you think they are. taken out. I thought you were safe there. Well, to tackle the next couple areas, the main large area, but we still got to actually do more over here on this side of the shop. Uh, we have a tool that should hopefully help. Hopefully it does. If not, we're in for a lot more manual labor. Let me show you. So what we got is a dethatcher to tow behind the mower. We're gonna either tow it behind the electric one or the regular one. I actually don't know which would be easier, but this is going to pull up a lot of the dead grass uh, to give us more room to plant seeds, but it should also get the embedded leaves out, at least most of them, so we have to do less raking. That's what I'm hoping for. That's really what I need it for. More than anything, I'm afraid to dethatch too much because then we might lose all the structure that's there, and that's what happened to the backyard is the structure wasn't great and then you know as soon as you start putting some wear and tear on it it just turns to sand so i don't you know i'm hoping it does what i need it to do without doing too much of what i don't need it to do moral of the story so i'm assuming we got to put this thing together so let's get to it so i've got a question for the older generation here did was there ever a time where you could buy something whether it was a tool a piece of furniture anything large that you didn't have to put together. Could you just go to the store and get something completely assembled and ready to go? Because I feel like I remember a time in my life where that was the case, but it's like the the Ikea phenomenon, the Ikea syndrome of 
everything being packed into as little pieces as possible to compact the packaging and then you have to put it together which i understand for cost savings it makes sense it's just something i dread about getting new tools is is that putting them together having to take that time if i'm in a rush and then also storing them you know a lot of times it's not necessarily about spending the money on a tool that's going to save me time because it probably masks out for sure to be worth it but at the end of the day, I've also got to build that tool and then I got to store it somewhere. Ow. So it's just one of those things I've been curious about lately. Was there ever a time where you didn't have to build everything you ever bought that was bigger than a lunchbox? I mean, I'll give them credit. Definitely a clever and cost effective way of attaching these, but man. So I initially planned on towing this behind the large mower, but the hitch was kind of high on it and I was worried we wouldn't be able to adjust it low enough. Also, this would make it a little easier so we could keep the uh, trailer hooked up to the large mower, but I don't know. All right, let's see how this goes. I'd like to secure those, but you know, do what we gotta do, I guess. So the old motorator was literally pulling the front wheels off the ground trying to move this thing, but I managed to get it adjusted high enough so it wasn't so aggressive. It was definitely, regardless, a little too aggressive at first, and it was working behind the motorator. I wanted to try it a little bit more just because of the convenience of keeping the trailer hooked up to the other one, but it just it didn't seem like we were really going to be able to get after it because it's so much weight. <sighs> I mean, it's definitely doing what I want it to do. You can see this is what I was going for. It's getting the leaves that are embedded in the grass out. So we'll probably make a few passes and then rake them up a little bit. But again, this isn't the main area. The main area we need this for is up front there. That's where we have a lot of embedded leaves and it should work best. But for here, we might as well get the hang of it. So once we got it attached to the mower, we could start making some progress, but it still just didn't seem it, like it was aggressive enough. So I decided to adjust it a little bit more, and it is a fine line. If we go too much, we're going to rip up all the grass structure. But in this area, it's not as big of a deal because there really isn't a lot of grass here to save or worry about. So we got it a little more aggressive, and it's, it's doing the thing. It's maybe not as much as we would like, but... It's doing something so once we got a bit of the leaves just kind of dredged out from the roots of the grass because you got to keep in mind you know when i leaf blow the driveway this is kind of where the leaves end up especially right next to the driveway so there's just years of them getting further and further embedded down in there so the hardest part and the most manual labor part of it isn't really raking them into a pile it's getting them up out from being embedded and then you can get them into a pile and that part's pretty easy so it definitely seemed like it helped there and it should definitely help on the next section because they are really pretty much all of them there are embedded so we're just making our little mo raider lines and sending it over and the tricky thing is basically if you you don't want to spend too much time trying to get every last leaf there's always a little bit left after you pass over it and it's it's tough you know because you want to get every single one but you could spend more time trying to get the last 10 percent of leaves than it took you to get the first 90 percent so i'm trying to balance that and uh but i just want it to be perfect i want to get every last leaf out of here even though more will fall tomorrow and there's nothing I can do about that. I mean, I love my trees, and there's a big reason why I got this house was all, all of the trees. So it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make, but a sacrifice nonetheless. So once we got most of them up, I decided to try to leaf blow the stragglers off into the woods. Uh, it seems like a good option, and uh, actually it worked great. If only we could do this everywhere.
All right, well, this area cleaned up pretty nicely. The leaf blower definitely worked really well for getting those straggler leaves that are just, it's like uh, when you're sweeping up a floor and you're sweeping everything into the dustpan, you end up with that line that you just can't get. That's what it's like with the leaves. So the leaf blower did a good job getting all those pushed into the woods. Uh, you can't use that method everywhere because obviously there's already leaves in the woods, so I don't mind blowing more in there. But our next area, that's not really gonna be an option. Um, so this is, I'm not saying I, and this, this one's going to be a lot, and uh, it should be the most transformative. Uh, as you can see, this is just Leaf City. I don't know that I've ever raked up here, and it's, uh, it's all leaves. So my goal is to get this completely cleared out, this entire area, and that way we can plant grass seed in kind of the larger areas. So to maintain it, we just have to mow it. You know, I could mulch this whole area or put rocks, but that would just be, weeds are gonna grow up through, it's gonna be a mess. So I'd like to put as much grass as I can, so I just mow it and fertilize it. So yeah, this is what's next. This whole front area here, and we have more than just leaf collecting to do up here. But yeah, this area is really packed with leaves. And then this whole area as well, pretty much from the street back to around here, around these trees. This area got kind of covered with leaves, so then the grass stopped growing, so then I stopped even mowing over here. Got a lot of twigs too, a lot of branches to clean up. Oops, there's one right there. <laughs> pretty much the whole, yeah, a lot. <laughs> it's gonna be the big one, but I think I think we can, we got a good method, so I think I think we can get it done quick if we hustle. So uh, we'll start with the dethatcher, see if we can get it cleaned out with that, and then go on from there. I guess I should pull these lights out while I'm here. They're just in the way, they just get in the way. We got stuff like this, these vines just growing wild here. So I guess let's get to it. So after doing a couple of passes with the uh, de-thatcher, it did get a lot of the leaves up to the surface, but we still had to rake them into a straight line just like we did before. I think it definitely saves us some time on the uh, manual labor aspect. So this first area, I definitely would like to be the nicest if I had to pick because this is the area I see mostly because when I pull in and out of the house, I pull into the second driveway. I never pull in really to the pull around driveway. So that's the area that I'm seeing constantly. But I mean, ideally we won't have to make that sacrifice and we can get all of it nice because this is the area that everyone sees when they pull down the street. And it kind of, I don't know, the curb appeal thing. It, it's, I don't see it as often as I see the rest of my yard, but then when I do see it, it just, it bugs me. It drives me crazy because it looks bad. I mean, the, the grass is kind of there, virtually non-existent. Uh, I mean, even when it comes time to mow, the rest of the grass might be like super long and that grass is barely high enough for you to be able to tell what you mowed and what you didn't mow. So it just bugs me. It just drives me insane. I mean, even right here around the mailbox, there's so many leaves and just coming to get the mail is a reminder that I've been slacking on my leaf extraction, leaf collection duties and it's just hung over my head because I, every time I see it, I think about the fact that I still need to do it. So getting this area taken care of especially is going to feel really, really good when we're all said and done. But the more leaves we pick up, the less grass I realize that I have. When the leaves are embedded in there, it kind of looks okay. But then when you start getting all those leaves up, you realize there ain't much there. All right, well, we're making some good progress in this area that has been covered with leaves for eternity. It's just the dust line, man. This is like the dustpan dust line I'm talking about. You just end up with a lot of crunched up leaves and stuff. And if you keep trying to get them up in the same area, we'll just never get it done. We're gonna keep plugging away at this area. It is very satisfying and rewarding. It's, 
tedious and time consuming, but very satisfying and rewarding, especially since this is a project I've wanted to do for years and years. Like, look at, look at all those leaves that we're about to pick up. Just look at all those leaves. So every time I do mow, this area is the part I dread the most. You have the fact that the grass doesn't really grow at the very front, so you can't really tell what grass you've cut and what grass you haven't. But then this area, because it is so packed with leaves, it still gets weeds that grow up through there that need to be cut. So you've either got to go through and weed eat the whole thing or mow over it. But the leaves uh, hide little surprises. So... <laughs> It's you never know what you're gonna get. It's like a, it's like a surprise surprise box, a mystery box, because there could be a rock under there, there could be a brick under there, and uh, mowers they, they really don't like eating bricks. So part of getting this area cleaned up is not just for the aesthetics of getting all the leaves out of here, but also being able to grow grass in this area and mow it without being worried that there's going to be something hiding up under all those leaves so we got them um, all raked that definitely has proven to be the more efficient way of doing this is to rake as much as i can and then mow raid vacuum up as much as i can and go back and forth instead of raking a little bit and then vacuuming a little bit and then raking a little bit it seems to work better but you get to kind of a point where you're just bouncing around raking up different piles and you realize you should just go ahead and pick up what you've got and see where you're at and then rake some more. So it's, there's a lot of leaves here. We are picking up a lot of leaves. But I will say compared to some of the other areas, this area being just a blanket of leaves, I was surprised at how far we could go and how much surface area we could cover for the amount of bags we were filling up. A lot of times you'll think there's not that many leaves there and then it's a ton of bags. But in this scenario, it was actually... A little bit of the opposite but regardless it is coming together it is looking way better there's a lot of sticks we're probably sucking up just as many sticks as leaves but uh we're getting through it one bag at a time all right well we've got this area pretty well cleaned up there's one pile there that i didn't notice that i left forgot to suck that one up but we've got a lot of the leaves out of here you can see it's mostly just dirt left there's a little bit of leaves there uh, but now we're getting into the tricky part, which is kind of the other side. What I should have done is leaf blow all this over there before I did over there. But since I already did over there, I don't want to ruin all my hard work. So we're going to try to do it, you know, pick it up from this side. Hopefully this part shouldn't be too bad. But we are, man, whew, I, we're going to put all the, the bags and stuff out tonight, uh, even though it's not till the day after tomorrow. Just because I don't want to forget again, but it is going to be... A lot. It's gonna be a lot. I hope, really hope they take it all. But anyway, I'm jibber jabbering. Let's get back to it. We're running out of daylight. It is very, very nice out right now.
out the majority of the weeds out of this area. For this area, that's our stopping point. take everything to the street let's do a little walk around check out the progress so far i think it it definitely looks a lot better we'll work our way around here so you got the wheelbarrow <laughs> uh this area was pretty bad before grass is really greening up over here and filling in hopefully our little seeds start to grow here soon uh, it looks like they might just be sprouting over in that corner but we'll see uh, this area where we got all the junk and overgrownness it's all cleaned up now we got some more leaves that fell since we were back here but it looks a whole lot better than it did all overgrown overrun junked up now our only junk that we can't fit inside is back there. Can't really see it. Uh, let's see, through here, not too bad. This area, we probably honestly got the most leaves up. We were able to just leaf blow them into the woods. There's not many left over here. So it'll be good to plant some grass here. We're eventually, hopefully sooner than later, gonna gravel this anyway, at least from the shop back for the trailers. We really need to build an RV carport over here. But uh, one thing at a time, you know how it goes. All right, front area. This, I didn't touch this, which is this part I noticed the most, but it's, we're gonna need some different tools for that. Um, but this, man, what a difference, wow. It's crazy to see this like this, not just a full blanket of leaves. I mean, obviously you see more dirt and more bare spots, but to me it just looks so much cleaner and we have now a base to start with and work up from so like i said still a little bit more to do in here i've got a lot of bush and tree trimming to do and getting more leaves out that are packed in there uh we still have this side too it goes back to we really don't have any more room to put stuff out for this week let's uh <laughs> let's see how much stuff we have it's gonna be an insane amount Oof. gosh <laughs> well i would say that's a lot of leaves and yard waste probably about 40 bags i know we had 22 in the well house that is a lot i man i just felt never ending pulling those bags out hopefully in two days they're gone and we can start over relieved tired but relieved feels good everything put away uh, I was hoping to get all of the leaf collection done by the end of this but uh, as usual kind of took a little more time than expected to uh, do the areas we did do that was a lot of leaves oh but we got it done and I am very very happy with the progress we've made with this place so far I mean we've done more to this property since in the last couple weeks and probably the entire rest of the time I've lived here. This is like three and a half years now. Uh, so whew, very, very pleased. Very tiring. Very worth it though. So 
We still got some more to do. We still got a little bit left to do on the leaf front and then trimming stuff and then we can start start with the forward progress, but we've made a lot of progress and it already looks way better. And it's it's definitely one of those things where you're like, I'm really, I'm glad I did this, you know? So I'm, I'm happy about that. I have been enjoying it. But that being said, we are out of time for this episode. Like I said, wanted to go a little further, but that's okay, because we're done for the day and I can go take a shower and relax. So I'm gonna do that. But for now, uh, I'll see you guys next time. We got a lot to do. We're gonna be started on the shop stuff, we got a really big project coming up there. Um, there's a lot, a lot of things, news, blah, 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 variety pack. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I will see you next time for all that. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>